All right, welcome everyone to podcast number 12 of the Hey Eric podcast. And today, I want to talk about a lot of things in the economy because a lot's happened. Today is May 12th. Um, CPI data came out this week. The week before that, uh, the Fed Reserve had their meeting. They raised interest rates. So we're going to go over all of that. And then also talk about the Utah real estate market and, and a few other cool personal things. But first of all, that CPI data that came out. So they measure it year over year. So the CPI is a basket of goods and they check prices on that basket of goods every month. And they usually do year over year comparisons, kind of like I do year over year comparisons for uh, the Utah real estate market. Um, So they compared, we're in May right now. So it was for April data. So April, 2022 compared to April, 2021 and how those prices increased. That's how they measure inflation. And this that came out was at 8.3%, the year-over-year data. Um, Last month, when everyone got super crazy about inflation, it was at 8.5%. So it has come down a little bit, 0.2%. Not a ton, but it is showing that probably the the economy is easing up a little bit. Um, that's, That's our goal with this. There's so much excitement or fervor in the market that and this isn't just real estate like we're talking about everything there's so much demand on goods and services that it drives prices up that's that's probably the best way to say it so they're trying to slow down that demand and by slowing it down it should push down prices same as in real estate but they're doing it with the basket of goods so it decreased a little bit from the March numbers to the April numbers. And with the rate rise that happened last week um, with the Fed funds rate, it'll probably, you know, the next month's numbers will probably decrease even more. So we know that two months ago, they raised rates a quarter percent or 25 basis points. And when I talk about they raised rates, um, it's the Fed funds rate, which is the overnight borrowing between banks. And that is what the their benchmark uh, interest rate or rate that they use. And when they raise or lower that, most other rates follow that. So car loans, mortgage loans, um, home equity lines of credit, business loans, all those kind of track that Fed funds rate. And that's one of the levers that the Fed uses to either stimulate or slow down the economy. So last month they did 25 basis points or quarter percent. And immediately we had this super rapid rise of interest rates for mortgages. Uh, it was super fast. And I've said this in previous videos, you know, it was so fast that I think they kind of priced in some of the future rate rises. Um, I need to, I haven't checked actually today what rates are for mortgage rates, but last week, the, the first week of May, the Fed met and at the end of their two day meeting, they announced that they're gonna raise that Fed funds rate a half a percent or 50 basis points. So now the Fed funds rate is 0.75%. So not quite one full percent, but that is gonna be pushing up the mortgage interest rate, auto loans, like I said, home equity loans, all those things are gonna be pushed up in an effort to slow demand, slow the economy to stamp out inflation. So next month, it'll be interesting when the CPI numbers come out so we can see, you know, how well they're doing with, you know, the Fed, the rate rises and and that. The other thing the Fed announced last week is that they're going to start uh, sloughing off some of their balance sheet. So they basically, to stimulate the economy, they put cash in the economy by buying bonds. So right now they are going to start selling those, getting them off their books, taking cash back out of the market. And I think the first three months were at like $60 million uh, a month. And then after that, I was going to $30 million or vice versa. But that's the other lever that the Fed's going to use to help slow down the economy and stop inflation. So just things to keep in mind. But when we talk about inflation, you know, where does it hit us the most? Usually it's gas prices, which are super high, which, you know, obviously gas prices are huge conversation with you know where we get our oil from whether it's domestic whether it's imported and the whole thing in russia and in the middle east but that's a different topic and we're not going to go into it but gas prices we feel that at the pump and and inflation definitely affects that because it's supply and demand food prices that affects a ton of people um auto prices lots of things everything in this basket of goods electronics everything so you know as companies have to you know, pay more for for goods, for transportation or for, you know, raw materials. They pass it on to the consumer, which is us. 
and and all of our prices go up so that's that's where you know we're all feeling it and so it's it's tough and that's why the fed is they try and keep it at two percent that's that's the target rate of inflation that the fed tries to follow um but because of the fed funds rate the cpi data the stock market has been at first super mixed you know after they announced that half percent last week the stock market closed green then the next day it just dropped off a cliff um and it's just been being pummeled the last five days that it's been open so you know the stock market is is not i guess taking the news well people are worried so who knows what's going to happen but I, i'm no professional there I, I did want to talk a little bit about the housing market obviously so in utah the housing market is still pretty competitive um, obviously it depends on neighborhoods and price points but the the last contract we got accepted that i got accepted recently uh, we still had to be super competitive we lost probably two or three offers along the way because i was really hoping we wouldn't have to do hard earnest money or waive lots of stuff but for the desirable homes that's still happening um, we did tour a handful of homes that have been on the market more than 10 days and when a house has been on the market for more than 10 days it tells us a few things a it's been basically rejected by by buyers and that could be for price condition location the the three main things um, and if it's been rejected by some buyers on that in that first seven days because there's still a lot of buyers out there in the utah market if it's been rejected by those buyers there's something wrong and you know it makes it easier for a different buyer to move in and and win that offer without waiving anything and probably getting some concessions from the seller so last week i actually toured four homes two of them were really nice fresh on the market the other two had been sitting on the market for 10 to 30 days um, and I gotta say, these two that were sitting on the market that were rejected by buyers in that first week, they were rough. One of them is an open door flip, um, and usually the, the other open door homes I've been through are usually pretty good. But as I've said before, open door, they, they're a corporation probably out of California. Um, they buy homes, you know, there's a ton of advertising on the radio right now for them. But they buy a home and then they just do paint and carpet, that's it. They don't do anything else to remodel the home. They're kind of like a, a skinny home flipper. You know, they're sk really skinny on what they do and then they, they sell it immediately on the market. But this home I went through, whoever painted that should be fired because there was overspray all over the bathroom fixtures, uh, behind some of the bathroom uh, lights, the lights above the mirror. They didn't even paint behind there. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I hope there's some oversight from those contractors, but it, it blew my mind. Um, and while as a buyer, you could get probably some concessions out of that seller um, because it's been sitting on the market for 10, 20, or 30 days. But it's still just, what does it tell you about the total quality of the home? It, it's a huge concern for buyers. So it, it's just, you know, there's this give and take when, when out there shopping for homes and, and dealing with, you know, who is selling the home, who remodeled it, what's going on with it. Is there pride of ownership or is it just, you know, lipstick on a pig? And lipstick on a pig is usually bad. Uh, the other home we toured that was had been on the market for a while, it actually in the same neighborhood we walked to it. It was so close. Um, it was also it looked kind of just like a rental that had been rented out for the last ten years, and the landlord didn't necessarily want to take care of or do anything with it and just put it on the market. They did offer, I think it was like a three thousand dollar credit at closing for paint or carpet or something. But it was just so rough that buyers didn't want it. They wanted a beautiful home. So, you know, to all you sellers out there, if you're going to sell your home, make sure it's in fair to good condition. Don't just throw crap on the wall and hope it sticks. You know, that's, that's kind of the moral of the story, I guess, because buyers, you know, it's an emotional decision. They're investing a lot of money and they want the home to be beautiful. They want it to be right for them. So when you... You know in this market that's what they're looking for so when you throw crap out there you don't get offers when i think about you know years ago after 2008 and 9 i think that there was probably a lot more people that were looking for foreclosures or for bank owned properties just because there were so many of them so more people accepted those the house i bought uh 10 years ago 
it was bank owned um and it was a pile of junk it, it wasn't it wasn't very pretty so just you know just with the change in the market with buyers expectations sellers expectations these are all important things to note when you're selling a house or buying a house um but just just food for thought for everyone if you have any questions you can you can comment below hit me up about that information because it, it's it was very interesting touring those four houses in one day um next oh my gosh so i just got to say this again i probably say this all the time relationships matter friends matter i i had a friend call me and we chatted he calls me every once in a while while he's driving and we just we just chat and it's always so inspiring and so fun to to just catch up and and chat with friends um if you haven't done that for a while if you haven't like called and caught up with an old friend you should do it um because it's important um uh, and, it, and it's fun it's fun to catch up and, and see what each other are doing um, but along those lines i also went to this this event uh, last Saturday, and it's it was so fun. My friend was bartending the event. Hey, that's his company he owns. Uh, my your favorite bartender, it's called. His name's Brian. But it, it was this really cool event at Little City, which is a, a an organization in the greenery, and they throw these like fun little block parties. There was some live bands. There was food trucks. There was drinks, all ages. It was a lot of fun and. It's just fun to, you know, catch up with old friends there, first of all, and then just meet new friends. Like, community is awesome. Community matters, and that's what I like so much about some of our communities, that Granary community, Sugar House community, the Salt Lake community, Park City community. Like, these communities, when people love a community, they invest in a community, they want to make it better, and I see that so often in all these different communities I, I visit and I go into, because doing real estate, I visit a lot of different, you know, subdivisions or cities with like smaller communities within it. Cause like you think about Salt Lake, there's the Liberty Wells, there's Sugar House, there's the Avenues, there's all these different neighborhoods. And that that is all across the state in most cities. There's all these little sub areas. Um, a lot of people don't think about that, but there are. Uh, and each of these sub areas, often if, if there's a lot of pride of ownership, pride of community. They build some really cool stuff. And it's good because it links and brings together a community to make it better, to just improve the overall quality of living. And that's that matters a lot, especially if, you know with property values, gentrification, all that can help in the future. So I just thought about that because that Saturday event was super fun. And it's amazing what all these people at Little City and, and Brian are doing to to just make the granary a lot of fun, a really cool place. Um, but that that's kind of you know what I wanted to touch on today for this podcast. A little shorter than normal, but just a lot of a lot of stuff's been going on in the market. Obviously, keep an eye on that. Um, who knows what's going to happen with the economy? Hopefully, Jerome Powell does the soft landing thing, but. You know, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, hit me up. You can uh, comment below, do anything you need. I'm happy to talk and, and catch up. See ya.